For Ferris, safety is of the utmost importance. It's embedded in our culture, it's embedded in everything that we do. It's really at the forefront of all of our operations. For the most part, people have natural gas in their homes and don't even really realize it. We operate natural gas all across North America. Um, any product can uh, be either safe or unsafe. It's really how we treat and respect those products. So from our aspect, we put a lot of controls in place to make sure that that product is safe. Liquefied natural gas is basically uh, natural gas that we use in our homes for heating and cooking. We've been using it for, for decades uh, in very safe, controlled manners. Uh, and uh, as long as there's a pipeline, we're able to use that commodity as, as a utility and as a resource. When we don't have a pipeline, it gets difficult to use. So what we do is we actually will liquefy uh, the natural gas, which reduces its volume by about 600 times. If this was natural gas in its get vapor state, I would have to have 600 of these on the table to accommodate one liquid version of, of the tank. Uh, so how do we liquefy uh, natural gas? We take out all the unwanted constituents, we run it through a refrigeration process, and we chill it to the point of approximately minus 162 degrees Celsius, which is about uh, 260 degrees below zero Fahrenheit. So when we're talking about cold temperatures like that, a minus 30, minus 40 Celsius day is actually heat, it's actually warm for uh, liquefied natural gas. So how do we keep it in a liquid state? We use cryogenic doers such as this. These are basically double-walled containers, very similar to a thermos, which we've all used throughout our lives in, in school and keep the hot chocolate hot, the coffee hot. When we talk about transport tanks that are transporting the commodity, they're all double-walled tanks. I'll give you uh, probably your, your first time view of, of liquefied natural gas. And as we go through, and start pouring uh, the LNG into some of the beakers and things. We'll talk about what the product's doing so that you know people get a better understanding of, of what's happening with the product. You're gonna see it very, very rapidly wanna boil as it's collecting heat. You can see it boiling as I'm pouring it. And the noise that you hear is rapid phase transition. It's, it sounds like uh, water boiling in a pan. Um, what that is, is it's the, the liquid converting itself back into a gas. So, so actually what you're seeing now is, is you're seeing liquefied natural gas. You're seeing natural gas that is running into homes, that's running in pipelines throughout jurisdictions all over the province, all over the country, and it'll continue boiling to the point where it cannot draw that heat anymore. It'll stabilize itself, it'll settle itself down. What I'm going to show you next is, is how it reacts if we spill it. So we can see it kind of bouncing around. It's like water in a, in a hot frying pan. I'm sure a lot of folks have seen that. Again, the boiling you're hearing is it's finding a hot spot. And as I move the liquid around, it gets a little harder to get it to convert back into a gas because of all the heat that it, it drew from the pan. So if you actually put your hand on the pan, this pan is now extremely, extremely cold. It took every bit of heat from the, uh, from the pan to convert the, the liquid back in, into a gas. Once it converts itself back into a gas, it, it's virtually gone and, and we'll have absolutely nothing left but a very, very cold surface. What happens when we spill it on soil? And so what I've got here is I've just got some, some generic uh, light soil. So again, you're seeing a lot of vapor, you're seeing condensation of, uh, again, a very cold gas. Uh, condensing uh, uh, water molecules in the air, creating the big fog. All I've got is I've just got really, really cold soil, and as you can see, the consistency is still very loose. There's no water. I, when I compress it, again, it, it, there, there's really nothing lift, left. There's no liquid uh, left in here at all. So again, we've got a, a, just basically a, a very nice potting soil. It's exactly the same material that we had, had spilled the LNG on. 
and again there's there's no contamination no evidence that LNG was was spilled on it however we take a hard hydrocarbon fuel such as again diesel as you can see as compared to LNG the LNG boiled off whereas your diesel still remains in the soil and it's totally saturated it's wet you can see it's getting stuck on my gloves it's never going to go away and it's now soil that we have to remediate. The next one is, uh, is water. I don't, uh, I don't use goldfish like you'll see in, in some demonstrations. Uh, I, I don't want anybody or any other living uh, organism to be uh, compromised uh, or even threatened when I, when I do these demonstrations. So again, it's just basically bottled, bottled water. So there's the, <clears throat> there's the boiling that we saw in the other two uh, situations. You're seeing a lot of fog being created. You're seeing natural gas actually migrating and converting itself back and, and dissipating back in the atmosphere. You hear a little bit of hissing and a little bit of popping. Again, that's the natural gas converting itself or the liquid converting itself back into a gas. And as I allow it to finish grabbing the rest of the heat, you'll see a little bit, a little bit of it pool on top just because of the creation of a nucleation zone. And what you have left is ice. So we took basically uh, bottled water that was not frozen, not clear, or close to being to freezing temperature. And because the, the LNG drew the heat from the water, it converted it in, into an ice. So from another environmental perspective, what's the condition of the water? Yes, it's great that, that we, we it converted it to ice and that's a marvelous thing, but what impact is it gonna have potentially to aquatic life? Again, I, I try and preserve the goldfish, so I'll just demonstrate it myself. Absolutely no contamination to that water at all. If it was, I wouldn't be standing here because I've done this demonstration numerous, numerous times. So again, It'll float on top, it'll convert itself back into a gas. <clears throat> the end result is you may have ice on the surface of the water, but there's no contamination of the soil, no mixture uh, into, into the, the, the lower levels of the water, uh, and, and no hazard to, to aquatic uh, marine life uh, in, in the spill zone. Uh, we're now gonna spill some diesel, just to show a comparative of, of what happens when there's a diesel or a gasoline spill that occurs. So now what you can see is you can see that the hydrocarbon, the diesel's floating on top, but it is not dissipating. And if this was flowing water, this diesel would go down, downstream, uh, contaminating other areas. So in comparison to LNG, which dissipates itself, it, it, it converts itself to a gas and is gone, diesel or gasoline or oil or any other hydrocarbon will stay floating on, on top of that water. Now, would I drink that? Obviously not. So as I said, uh, LNG expands uh, 600 times the gas. And this is what it kind of looks like. There's your boil rate. That's telling me how fast it's gonna boil off. The gas within this balloon now is, is, the, uh, is the gas that we have in our homes. This is the gas that is a big part of our daily lives. So that's your expansion. What I'm gonna show you is now as we apply a cryogenic liquid back to this gas, we will actually see recondensation of the gas back into a liquid in this balloon. So we didn't get it back to the, to the, to the original size, but we got, it, we got it down quite a ways. And there's a little bit of LNG in the bottom. As it absorbs heat, it's gonna expand itself back to its original size. What I'm hoping to demonstrate in, in, in this next little tidbit here is, is the flammability of, of natural gas in a balloon. And, and everybody's gonna to have to excuse me. I always ask my audience to, to be my eyes for me, uh, to tell me what color the flame is. Okay, so I, I closed my eyes. Did anybody see what color the flame was? 
there was no flame. And, and the reason there was no flame is there was pure natural gas in that balloon that we didn't have the right mixture of air to gas to be able to have a, a flame or, or to have a fire uh, exist. What I want to demonstrate here is, is that it doesn't explode. Um, it'll, it'll poof, uh, but then it'll burn very, very uh, lazily. So what you're seeing is you're seeing a very lazy flame. You're seeing a very orange flame. You're seeing absolutely no smoke. You're getting absolute 100% combustion. And again, as the, the liquid's grabbing some of the heat from the flame, it converts itself into a gas and it's gone. The interesting thing about this is if you feel the bottom of the pan is freezing cold, you can see the frost. And again, absolutely no residue material left, no carbon buildup, no nothing. You just get frost in, in the bottom of, of your pan or the bottom of the surface that, that was on fire. We've got a, a little bit of diesel in the pan, uh, similar to what we did with the LNG, and we're gonna attempt to ignite the diesel. As compared to the LNG, uh, the, the thermal radiation, the heat coming off of it is not as warm as the LNG. Uh, and it, as you can see, the, uh, the smoke, the black smoke uh, coming off the, the diesel as compared to absolutely uh, no smoke from, from the natural gas. I think really it's, it's very important for people to just really understand what a product is and that's really the goal of this is to help educate people. Because it's so new to a lot of people, really LNG has been in the marketplace for a lot of years. It's been operating safely in their neighborhoods for you know, going on 40 or 50 years. They haven't even known that it existed. It's just really hit the mainstream now. So really that's what we're trying to accomplish here is, is to get the message out that, that it is a safe product if, if it's utilized properly. Anything can be safe if you respect it and put the proper control.